สวัสดีค่ะ Now after we learn about the reaction quotient of Q, which is if we have a set of concentration of substances of reaction which are not at equilibrium, we can use the value of Q to compare with K and predict the direction of the reaction. In this video, we're gonna learn about the Le Chatelier principle, which related to the direction of the change of equilibrium also. The reaction at equilibrium may be disturbed and that the reaction will try to regain its equilibrium again. And the guide that is used to predict the direction of change is the Le Chatelier principle. And it's kind of suggests that when any change is imposed on a system at equilibrium, the system would respond by obtaining a new equilibrium condition that minimizes the impact of that imposed change. This means if you disturb the equilibrium system by any change, the reaction would try to shift in the direction that minimize or reduce the impact of the change. The change that we will discuss are the change in concentration of substances, the change in the system pressure or the volume of the container, the change in temperature, and the last one, if we use the catalyst. Let's put this balance to represent the system at equilibrium. At equilibrium, we have the balance between reactant and product. If we change concentration of either the reactant or the product, this balance will change. So let's see the first one. If we try to add reactant into the system, if we add R on this side, what's happening is the balance is will be heavier on the reactant side. This means the system is disturbed. So to make the system balance again, the reaction would have to produce some more product, which means reactants must be used to make more product. Once that happened, our system will back into balance again. This means the system return to equilibrium. And you can see that the amount of reactant that we added was used to produce some product. The total amount of reactant at this point will be more than the previous one. And also the amount of product at this new equilibrium also higher than the amount of product before. This time, if we try to remove some product out of the system at equilibrium, say we remove this product from the system, what happens is that it's no longer balanced, it's heavier on the reactant side, so the system must product produce some more product in this direction. And then once that happened, the system will 
return back to balance again. Some of the reactant was used to produce the product. Another case, if we try to add the product into the system at equilibrium, this time we will add the product on this side. What happened is that now the reaction is unbalanced and it is heavier on the product side. What do you think the system should do? The system must try to regain its balance by produce more reactant. So the direction of change would be in this direction. Once that occur, the system will return back to its equilibrium again or balance again. The last one that you can try to think about the direction of change is also, if we try to remove the reactant R out of the system at equilibrium, if we remove this R, what happens is like this. Less R heavier on the P, it's unbalanced. The system will try to regain its balance by making more reactant or shift in this direction. Once that occur, it's back on balance again. Okay. Now, if we look at the composition of substance at the new equilibrium compared to the old one, after we disturb the equilibrium either by adding substance in or removing some substance out, we will get the new composition. If we add either reactant or product in, the new equilibrium will have the more reactant and also more product. If we either remove product or remove reactant, the new equilibrium will have less reactant and less product. The equilibrium composition are changed. You see that new equilibrium has different amount of reactant and product compared to the old one. This also different to the old one. Equilibrium composition are changed. However, the value of equilibrium constant K would remain the same or close to the O1. Let's prove it from this example. This is the reaction of sulfur dioxide decomposed to sulfur dioxide and oxygen. This is the O equilibrium where you have this amount of substance, 0.6 mole of sulfur dioxide, 0.32 mole of sulfur dioxide, and 0.16 mole of oxygen. When you add the reactant in, add one mole of sulfur dioxide in. The direction of change that we learned previously is that at reactant, the equilibrium will shift to the right, shift to the right, produce more product. As you can see here, at the new equilibrium, you have more product. 0.32 increased to 0 0.54, 0 0.16 increased to 0 0.27. And the amount of the reactant in total is less than 1 plus 0.68. It used some of that to make more product. So itself, the reactant itself has only 1.46 remain. Let's calculate. 
the Kc. This reaction has the Kc expression like this. Remember, product on top, reactant below, and of course, raised to the power of stoichiometry coefficient. Let's assume that this flask is a one liter flask. The O equilibrium, you add the number in, you will get Kc equal to 0 0.035. The new equilibrium, you use this number to calculate. You get the Kc 0 0.037. So you see that they are approximately the same. So composition of concentration change, but K remain the same. Let's look at the changing in the external pressure or the volume of container at equilibrium. This change only affect the reaction that has unequal number of mole of gas of the product and reactant. As you learn from the gases property, the pressure of gas is directly related to the number of mole of gas. If we have more number of mole of gas, it produces more pressure. So if the pressure of the system at equilibrium is increased, they will have the same effect that as the volume is decreased. Once the pressure of the system is increased, the equilibrium will try to decrease that pressure. It will try to decrease that pressure. So it will shift in the direction that produce a smaller number of mole of gas. So you go back to this equation. Smaller number of mole of gas, smaller n. So P is smaller or decreased as well. Let's have a look at this reaction of nitrogen dioxide in equilibrium with dinitrogen tetraoxide. This gas is brown where this one is colorless. If the external pressure is increased, the direction of change will be to the side that has smaller number of mole. In this particular example, reactant has two mole of gas, product has one mole of gas. So once the external pressure is increased, it will shift to the right, okay. it will shift to the right. So let's see the picture here. This is the system at equilibrium. If we increase pressure by decreasing the volume, we press this up, the volume is decreased. The color will be darker, but this is because it has more concentration. Volume is less. But once this occurs, the equilibrium is disturbed and it will try to regain back to equilibrium again. We found from this hypothesis that it will shift to the right. So once the equilibrium is returned, the color is faded to be less brown. Again, let's have a look at the actual number. Reaction between sulfur trioxide and sulfur dioxide and oxygen. This is the O equilibrium. 
In a 10 liter container, we have amount of substance as shown on this slide, 0.68 mole sulfur dioxide, 0.32 mole sulfur dioxide, 0.16 mole of oxygen. If the system is disturbed by increase the external pressure, so the size of the gas would be reduced to one liter. Once the system returned to the equilibrium again, we found that the new equilibrium has this amount of substances, 0.83 mole of sulfur dioxide, 0.17 mole of sulfur dioxide, 0.085 mole of oxygen. So when the pressure increase, the change is in the direction that has smaller number of mole of gas compared to reactant side has two mole. Product side has two plus one mole, which is three mole. Reactant has less number of mole of gas than the product. So the chain would shift to the left, increase the amount of reactant. So the new equilibrium has more reactant than the old equilibrium. The new equilibrium has less product than the old one. How about the value of K? As you see, we calculate K from this expression. Put the value of concentration in. Remember, this is number of mole. This is the volume. To get concentration, we use mole divided by volume. So we put this concentration mole per liter in. And we get Kc equal to 3.54 times 10 to the minus 3. At the new equilibrium, we have this amount of substances in one liter container. So this is the concentration. You see the value of K is 3.56 times 10 to the minus 3. Very close approximately the same K. So change pressure or volume of the system at equilibrium. The equilibrium shift, the new equilibrium has different composition of substance, but K remain the same. Next, if we look at the change of temperature of system at equilibrium. Le Chatelier principle give the direction of change like this. If we increase the temperature of the equilibrium mixture, it will shift to in the direction of the endothermic reaction. In the opposite way around, if we decrease the temperature the equilibrium will shift in the direction of exothermic reaction. This time we are not talking left or right at the moment. We're going to have to define what is the endothermic reaction and what is exothermic reaction first. If we look at the endothermic reaction, you can write reactant produce product and the enthalpy change would be a positive value. Positive value. Endothermic reaction, the reactant must absorb some heat to produce product. So we can actually add the heat as one of the reactant site. Heat is on the reactant site. And you can look at this 
as the same way when we look at the change in concentration. If we increase the temperature, which means we increase the heat, the change will go to the right to release some of that heat. Increase the heat, shift to the right for endothermic reaction. Now, if we look at the reaction that is exothermic reactant, produce product, delta H would be in the negative value. Exothermic reaction, reactant, produce product and release the heat. So we can put heat on the product side. And of course, if we increase temperature, we increase the product side, the equilibrium will shift to the left to the reactant side. So if we increase the temperature, it will shift in the direction of endothermic reaction. The first one here, endothermic reaction is left to right, increased temperature would shift to the right where exothermic reaction exothermic reaction increased temperature will shift in the direction of endothermic which is the opposite so increased temperature will shift to the left If we look at the value of K before changing concentration or pressure, composition change, but K is the same. Now, the temperature change, the equilibrium K is changed as well. You can look at this graph here. This is the endothermic reaction. Increase temp, shift to right, which means we produce more product. This is the equilibrium. This dotted line here is the point where we increase the reaction temperature. Equilibrium, shift right, produce more product. So product is increased, reactant is decreased the equilibrium return or regain again the concentration back to constant so we increase the product k would be increased as well if we look at exothermic reaction exothermic reaction same thing this is equilibrium point and we start to increase the temperature here for the exothermic reaction increase the temp it shift to the left which means reactant is increased product is decreased once the product is decreased k is also decreased Last change that we will consider is by adding catalyst to the equilibrium system. We know that catalyst increase the reaction rate. For the reversible reaction, catalyst will affect the rate in forward and reverse direction to the same extent, which, which means that there will be no change in equilibrium constant and there will be no change in direction of the reaction as well. Adding catalyst is, uh, can be seen as the effect of giving the people here, both of them, 
with the bigger shovel. So let's see this uh, animation from the YouTube video. If you remember, these two people dig a hole at the same rate. But if we're giving them the bigger shovel, they can dig the hole faster, but both of them can do it faster. So we will not see the change in the size of the hole. So which means that adding catalyst will have no effect to the equilibrium position. Now, let's see in summary. Le Chatelier principle is a qualitative guide in predicting the direction of change for a reaction to return to equilibrium state after being disturbed. We have seen the change in concentration. If we add substance to the equilibrium system, the equilibrium will shift to the opposite side of that change, but the K is constant. If we add reactant, it will shift to the product side. If we add product, it will shift to the reactant side. So shift to the opposite side of the substance that has been added. If we change pressure or volume of the equilibrium system, the direction of change would be if we increase the pressure, it will shift to the side that produce smaller mole of gas and K is remain constant. If we change temperature, if we change temperature, increase temperature, equilibrium will shift in the endothermic direction and the K value is also changed. If we add catalyst to equilibrium system, there will be no equilibrium shift. Both directions occur at the faster rate. And that's it for this video. I see you next time. สวัสดีนะคะ